to Against the Grain Sports, and I'm your host, Jody Coleman. We got our co-host, Gerard McCain. Sports all way. And I'm your host, Jody Coleman, and we're going to talk about the NBA with our NBA guru, Gerard McCain. Now, you wrote a story on AgainstTheGrainSports.com about potentially Paul George coming back. Mm -hmm. Kind of give me an analysis of what you think he should do. I mean, I think he should come back when he's healthy. Um, I don't think he should wait till the next season. I think he should come back, even though they're not going to make the playoffs just to knock some of the rust off and to show some of his guys that, you know, he, he, he is healthy and he's ready to go. I think it'll it'll boost player morale and it'll give the fans of Indiana something to, you know, look forward to in 2016. You know, I, once again, I know this seemed like a common thing, but I'm going to go against the grain on this one. I think that Paul George should shut it down for the rest of the year and get completely healthy. They're not going to win. They're, they're not going to make the playoffs. Uh, they're running with, with Stucky at the two-guard position. I mean, you got that's a lot the, of guys. That's the main reason why he needs to come back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really, I truly believe that he needs to get completely healthy, you know, go through some all-season training, uh, get get familiar back with the court. I think coming back to the coming back to the game, and with some of the pieces that don't, don't need to be in Indiana, I think they really need to blow that team. I think David West has played maybe his last game as a, mm -hmm. as a pacer. Roy Hibbert, I think they should have made that deal to Cleveland and maybe got some young guys in there, put some more young guys around uh, Paul George. But I think coming back this year will be, uh, I think, will be a major mistake. Not only that, um, if you if you even look at their record, like, you know, Roy Hibbert was crying about getting the ball more and being more of a scorer. And now that he has the team to himself, he's done absolutely nothing with it. I actually, you know, I didn't know he was, was even starting anymore. I, I didn't either. He, he, I haven't heard his name. Too I, much. I don't think he likes the fact that he is the focal point. Sometimes people shy away from success. And I think Roy Hibbert is one of those guys that likes to complain but doesn't have a solution when he complains. I mean, we talking about a guy that had to be taking fishing just to get some rebounds in the game. So, And when you go through a whole game at seven foot two and had, what, one or two rebounds in that game mm -hmm. and didn't score at all, uh, you really got to question if you even want to play basketball. I, I but but that, that kind of just shows how important Paul George is to this Indiana franchise. Um, last year they were the number one team in the East, and now they're 18 and 30. And that's true. I think maybe when we start looking at the MVP races, maybe you have to put Paul George. Remember the year they put uh, Peyton Manning in when he didn't, when he didn't, when he was out for the Indianapolis Colts, and yeah. it was like he was the MVP because they went from 14 and 2 to 2 and 14. That's the same similar, it's ironic that it's in Indiana again. And that's that ironic with the, uh, the similarities to Paul George. And also, you're missing 21.7 points per game on the floor. You're missing a playmaker. You're missing a leader. You're missing that, that, that kind of a fear factor for the other team. Um, you, you're missing that guy that the other coaches have to kind of, you know, Playing around and not, defensively, and not to mention he's a stopper defensively. He he, he likes to play defense. He he's, is. he's a guy that likes. To play.